Uing is a class on the Srimad Bhagavatam. Third Canto, 25th Chapter, Text Number 36 Given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Recorded on December 5th, 1974 in Bombay, India Upon seeing the charming forms of the Lord, smiling and attractive, and hearing His very pleasing words, the pure devotee almost loses all other consciousness. His senses are freed from all other engagements, and he becomes absorbed in devotional service. Thus, in spite of his unwillingness, he gets liberation without separate endeavor. Taidarsaniya avaya bhai dudara bilasa hasik chitamama sutta Itatmana pita pranam sa bhakti anicchato me gatimanni upadimte. So, Sri Vigraha Darshanam, this temple is situated to give people the facility as it is described here. Uh, <coughs> Darshaniya Abhayavai Yudhara. We have to see the deity uh, beginning from the lotus feet, not jumping over the smiling face. That is the way. Uh, first of all, to try to see, and when you have practiced, Try to see the lotus feet of Krishna. And when you have practiced to this habit, even after uh, <coughs> visiting the temple, if you go home, if you have practiced to see the lotus feet of Krishna, that is meditation. So, darshaniya avayavai. Different dreams. First of all, feet, then the thighs, then the belt, then the chest, then you reach the smiling face. Uh, <coughs> Krishna and Krishna's form, if you meditate on Krishna's form, that is Krishna. So we associate with Krishna. Uh, his smiling face, his flute, his hand, his dress, his concert, Timothy Radharani, or any other gopis surrounded by. In this way, practice this habit of observing the Supreme Lord. Therefore, he has appeared, Harcha Vigra. Uh, so that we can see him. Uh, in our present eyes, even Krishna comes. But we have no eyes to see. Therefore, for the Kanishtadikari, there are three kinds of devotees. Kanishtadikari, Madhamadikari, and Uttamadikari. Uttamadikari means first class, most advanced. And Madhamadikari means in the middle stage, not very advanced, not very lower. And Konishtadikari, just the neophyte, beginning. So, for the beginners, uh, it is recommended that you see the deity daily or always, uh, beginning from the lotus feet, uh, as you are practiced, uh, then go up to the smiling place. And here also, Srimad Bhagavata, simply if you try to see and if you don't hear, then it will not stay very much. Therefore, we see practically in many temples, because there is no discussion about Krishna, <coughs> simply it is there, people go for some time, then gradually 
especially those who are educated, uh, so-called educated, they do not feel very much interested. And it has actually happened so. Many temples, uh, they are not visited even by uh, the devotees because there must be also hearing about. Two things must go on. The deity must be worshipped. This is called Pancharatriki Vidhi. Uh, and to hear about the Supreme from Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Vedic literature, that is called Bhagavad Vidhi. So the Pancharatriki Vidhi and Bhagavad Vidhi must go parallel. Then uh, one, even one is a neophyte, gradually he will come to the uh, intermediate stage between the neophyte stage and to the advanced stage. And, of course, it is very difficult to find out one in very advanced stage, but there are, uh, there are many advanced stages. Uh, at least uh, the spiritual master is supposed to be in the advanced stage, but for preaching purpose he come down in the intermediate stage, for preaching one. <coughs> because the advanced stage there is no discrimination that here is a devotee and here is a non-devotee. Because the advanced devotee sees that everyone is devotee except himself. The advanced devotee sees that he is not a devotee, but all others are devotees. This is advanced. But in a Kanishtadikari, in the neophyte state, they simply concentrate on the deity. Achayameva haraye japkujang sadhaya yate. That is required in the beginning. He, according to the prescribed duties, as they are mentioned in the uh, scriptures, one must take care of the deity. Uh, but <coughs> there, unless a little father advance, he does not know who is a devotee and what is his function with others. Uh, in the Madhavadika, when one at still further advances, he has got four kinds of visions. Ishara, Tadadhineshu, Bhaliseshu, Dishasucha, Prema, Maitri, Kipa, Upekha, Jakarati, Sa, Madhvam. Madhvam Adhikari is not only interested in Jiti Vashe, but he knows who is a devotee and who is innocent and who is uh, Bhagavan. Ishara tadadhineshu balishu. Balish means innocent. There are many innocent men. They actually they do not know what is to be done, uh, who is God. They are innocent. They are not offenders. But there are others who are offenders. Dishap. Dishap means envious. They are immediately envious as soon as they hear of a devotee of God. They are called envious. Dishap. So Madhavadikari, he knows uh, God, uh, Krishna, Krishna to Bhagavan. So he wants to develop his love for Krishna. Uh, Abhartha Karam, Vasati, Namagane Sadharuchi, the Madhavadikari, he wants to see that not a moment is wasted without Krishna consciousness. That is Madhavadikari. Abhartha Karam, he is always careful that whether I am, uh, I am this is spoiling the valuable time of my life. That is the first qualification of Madhvamadikāra, of Bhattakālattam, because we have got very short period. 
living period. We do not know when we shall die. There is no certainty. Uh, foolish people may think that I shall live forever, but that is foolishness. Life is very transient. At any moment we can die. Therefore, those who are advanced devotees, <coughs> they want to see that I have got very short period of life uh, at my disposal. <coughs> Therefore, uh, he is very anxious to utilize every moment uh, for advancing in Krishna consciousness. That is what the Vedas. Abhartha and he has got special test for chanting the Hare Krishna. Namagane Sadharuchi. Basati Tat, Priti Tat Basati Sare. And he is very much anxious to live in such places like Vrindavan, Dwarka, Mathura, where Krishna lived. Tat Basati Sare. Vasati means residence. When Krishna appears on this planet, he lives in Mathura, Vrindavan, Dwarka Ram. So devotee also, advanced devotee, they want to live in the residential places of Krishna. Uh, Krishna, God has got his residential places everywhere. That's a fact. Annantarastham Paramanu Chayanta. He is residing even within the atom. But still, uh, he has got special residential places like Vrindavan, Dwarka, Mathura. So a devotee is anxious to live in those places. Pritikas Masati Sthale Namagane Sadaruchi Abhartha Kalatam. Their business is to increase love of God. <coughs> From to increase love of God means there is also process. How to increase? Uh, yes, the process is given by Rupa Vashani, Adho Sadhya Tato Sadhu Sangha, Ata Bhajana Kriya, Tato Anartha Nivitishya, Tato Nishtha Tato Ruchi, Tathāsakti, tato bhāva, sāvatāṁ, ayam prīmo, prādu bhāvi bhavet kama. These are the gradual states. Sadhā. Sadhā means faith. Faith is the beginning. Without faith you cannot make. Uh, there is no Krishna Krishna consciousness. Uh, faith means that faith is created after reading Bhagavad Gita. If you read Bhagavad Gita carefully and if you actually understand Bhagavad Gita as it is, then the faith will be created. Without reading Bhagavad Gita, there is no question of faith in Krishna. So what is that faith? The Krishna says that Sarvadharman Parityajya Mami Kam Sarvam. So you give up all other engagements, you just surrender to me and I shall give you protection. See, if you have got faith, if you believe in the words of Krishna, that is called faith. If you don't believe in the words of Krishna, if we study as a literary <coughs> thesis and then throw it away, that is not faith. The faith is explained by Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. He says, uh, Sadha Sabde Vishya Sudhira Nishcha. Faith means one who has got firm faith in the words of Krishna. That is called faith. Uh, I am reading Bhagavad Gita, but I do not accept Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Or he is a person, as he says in the Bhagavad Gita, he says, Matta paradaram nana kinchi jasti dhananya. Matta, when he says, he is a person. So Krishna says that there is no more better personality or better 
superior uh, existence than myself. Manmanam Hamuman Bhatta Madhyari Man Namaskri. He says, Me, Mamiya Prabhupadanti, Mayami Tantaranti. Aam Sarvasa, Aam, Me, I. He says, Everywhere. Therefore, Krishna is person. Krishna is not in person. Klesa Adhikatara Stesha Abhaktya Sapta Chitasa. It is said that one who is impersonal is, he takes more trouble to come to me. He will come later on, but it will take some time. The impersonal feature of understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth, it is partial understanding. Just like we have explained several times that we have got ex- experience of the sunshine because sunshine is very easily approached. Uh, but that understanding of the sunshine uh, is not real understanding of the sun globe or sun planet or the sun god. That is not uh, perfect understanding. It is Partial understanding that you can understand the sun globe is full of heat and light. That's all. But how much heat, what is the temperature of heat, how much light is there, and where is the source of heat and light, that is not possible to understand. Everyone will admit this. Simply by saying, because sunshine is entering your room from the window, that does not mean you know everything of the sun. Similarly, this impersonal understanding of the Absolute Truth is like that. That's like sun sign is impersonal. But the sun god is person. If sun god is not person, how Krishna says, Imam divasati yugam prattva maham abhayam. This Bhagavad Gita, he says to observe that this Bhagavad Gita, science of Bhagavad Gita, or this yoga system, bhakti yoga system, I spoke to Sun God. Exactly like that I am speaking to you. So Arjuna is person and Krishna is person. Uh, therefore, <coughs> the, in the Sun planet the predominating deity is a person. He is not in person. Uh, so you cannot understand that person simply by seeing the sun sun. That requires better qualification, how to enter the sun planet, how to see the predominating deity. <coughs> the impersonalists, they simply conclude that uh, in the same way as we, uh, foolish person, conclude that the sun planet is simply a fiery uh, substance and there is nothing, uh, no, if there is nothing, if there is no sun god predominating deity or the president of the sun globe, then how Krishna could speak with him? In the Bhagavad Gita it is said, Aham vivasati yugam prasava. It's like we talk, we are talking with you. We are not talking in the sky, vacant. We are talking with persons. These are intelligence, these require intelligence. So now we can imagine. How the sun god can be person? It is a fiery, big fire, substance, and how one can live? This is also foolishness. Because I cannot live in the fire, therefore nobody can live in the fire. That is my foolishness. And my body is not uh, <coughs> so meant. That's why you cannot live in the water. It does not mean that there is no living entity in the water. It requires intelligence. Similarly, if you cannot live in the fire, it does not mean that nobody lives. Yes, there are living entities whose body is so made, just like the fish and other aquatics, they live. Their body is so made. This is intelligent study. Otherwise, if you simply compare with my intelligence, my position, my circumstances, and it conclude all others like that, that is blindness. 
That is not planned. So similarly, impersonal realization of God, that is imperfect, exactly like the uh, uh, understanding of the sun sign is not understanding of the sun globe and the sun bone. Everyone can understand it. It is not very difficult. If you think that because I have seen sun sign, then I have seen everything, I have known everything of the sun. No. You do not know even how big the sun globe is. And when you read books, when you read scientific books, you can understand it is fourteen hundred times bigger than this planet. <coughs> so ultimately, uh, God is person. He is not impersonal. Impersonal understanding is imperfect, partial understanding. Uh, that is, God, Krishna, He is Satchidananda Bhigra, Satchit Ananda. So impersonal understanding of Krishna means you understand only the short portion. The two other portions, Chit and Ananda, you do not know. You do not So uh, if you understand Krishna, then you understand the impersonal Brahma realization and localized Paramatma realization. That is stated in the Veda. Just mean vijñāte sarvavevam vijñātam bhavanti. Uh, if you simply understand Krishna, uh, then you understand the other two features. Because Krishna is ānanda. Uh, you see Krishna's feature. Uh, he is not thinking, uh, taxing his breath, uh, how to do this, how to do that. No. Is Ananda. Ananda he is playing on his flute. And Radharani is there. He is in ecstatic Ananda. Allahini Shakti. Radha Krishna Pranaya Brikiti Allahini Shakti. It is the transaction of uh, bliss, transcendental bliss. Allahini Shakti. Krishna has got many potencies. Out of that, uh, one potency is Allahini Shakti. Pleasure gives. His Atma is full in himself. When he wants to enjoy, he expands himself, his uh, pleasure potency. So Radharani is his pleasure potency. And the gopi is an expansion of Radhana. Ananda Chinmaya Rasa Pratibhavi Tabhi, Stabhija Eva Nija Rupa Tayakalabi. Nija Rupa. The forms are Krishna, but Ananda Chinmaya also, just to test the mellow of transcendental bliss, Ananda Chinmaya also, Pratibhavitavi, Tavija Eva Nija Rupa Tayakala, Goloka Eva Nivasati, Akilatma Bhuto, Govindamadi Purisam, Tavam. This is a verse from the Brahma Samhita. So, Krishna is, uh, we are seeing the form of Krishna, that is the ultimate understanding of the absolute truth. Uh, Brahmaiti, Paramatmaiti, Bhagavaniti, Sabdati. Badanti, Tattattavida, Satyam, Jadhyana, Madhyam, Brahmaiti, Paramatmaiti, Bhagavaniti, Sabdati. So, Satchit Ananda, the Brahma realization is short realization. Paramatma realization is chief realization. And Bhagavan realization means ānanda realization. Satchit ānanda. And in the Vedanta Sutra it is said that the absolute truth is ānandamaya abhyāsā. Ānandamaya. He is always ānandamaya. He read Krishna Zila. He is always full of transcendental bliss, especially in Vrindavan. Vrindavan, that is his original residence. They are simply ānanda. Krishna is uh, playing with his cowherds, boys, friends. Krishna is dancing with the gopis. Krishna is stealing mother, jasudas, butter. Krishna is doing so all ānanda, transcendental bliss. So, 
uh, here it is stated that if you begin your devotional service, as it is prescribed, simply see the deity, uh, then gradually realize how Krishna is smiling, how Krishna is playing on his flute, how Krishna is enjoying the company of Srimati Radhanani. We have to see simply, simply by seeing. And if you hear about Krishna, uh, just we are hearing now, these two processes will increase uh, in such a way that one time, anichyato me gatim annim prajumte, you automatically become a great devotee. Uh, simply, if you come to this temple, or any temple, where deity is very nicely worshipped, uh, these are all scientific, it is not imagination. Uh, just like people think that they are worshipping idol and imagining something. No, they are stated in this. Or Shastra, it is a prescribed method for developing your God consciousness or Krishna consciousness. Uh, it is a science. Vijnana samannitam. Jnanam me paramam guyam. Jad vijnana samannitam. Sarha sam tad angancha grihana gadita na maya. When Krishna advised Brahma after creation, then he said, Jnanam me, this is called Chatur Sloki Bhagavad. Uh, the four slokas, which is the basic principle of Srimad Bhagavad. Jnanam me paramam bhuyam. The knowledge of Krishna is very confidential. Bhuyam. Bhuyam, bhuyatama. In the Bhagavad Gita, I say, My dear Arjuna, I have spoken to you so many things. But now, because you are my very dear friend and devotee, therefore I am disclosing the most confidential knowledge. What is that? Sarva dharma and bhurita jamaram. Jaya sarandha. That's all. This is confidence in knowledge. Don't try to understand many things, or if you have heard, if you could not understand, if you have, then I tell you, this is the most confidential part of knowledge, that sarva dharma and paritpajya, before this verse, the guyyad guyyatam. Guyyad guyyatam. Guyya means very confidential. So this guyya, this Brahma realization is also very confidential. But Paramatma realization is guya tara, still more confidential. And to understand Krishna is guya tamo, superlative. Guya is guya to, to, to understand Krishna, uh, Krishna has explained in so many ways. Simply to understand Krishna, makes you liberated. Tapta deham punat janma naiti, māmi So therefore, this is the process of understanding Krishna. These Krishna consciousness centers are being opened all over the world just to give the people the chance how to become liberated simply by seeing the deity and chanting Hare Krishna. This is the opportunity. <coughs> but fools and rascals, they think that it is nonsense. <coughs> but actually it's not, this is a science. So by following this process, then what will be the Hita-atmana, hita Then gradually your mind will be fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness. Mind and senses. Hitātmana and hita prana, 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 we are prana, life, these are the senses. So if your mind and senses are fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness, that is called bhakti. That is called bhakti is not sentiment. It is a practical science when your mind and senses are fully absorbed in Krishna. The senses are engaged in serving Krishna, and mind is always thinking of Krishna. Savai mana krishna pararavinda. 
Bachangsi by Kuntra Gulan over me. Just like Maharaj, Ambris. He was a great devotee. And his business was although he is a king, very responsible king and ruling over the world. But his mind was always absorbed in Krishna. This is possible. Uh, this is possible. Uh, that the example is given that a uh, woman or a lady is always busy in his household affairs, but she also takes care of a bunch of hair, how to set it up and very really nicely comb. She does not forget. In spite of her being engaged in so many household affairs, she does not forget to take care of the bunch of hair. Similarly, one who is actually devoted, he may be engaged in so many things, but he does not forget Krishna. That is the example. Very good example. So, any devotee who is serious about this deity worship, hearing about Krishna, chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, following the Vedic principle, or rejecting the sinful activities of life, in this way we can come to the platform of spiritual life. And if we act accordingly, that is called bhakti, yoga, or the liberated state. Thank you.